Welcome back to Journey in the Word. It's good to have you with us. It's been kind of weird over the last couple of weeks. I don't know about the release date, but between some things that I've had going on and some things that Kevin's had going on, we've been uh, haven't been quite as steady in our in our production. But hopefully, we'll be back in action for a little while. And so, with that. Today, I want to start a new study about things that we are to guard. And I want to introduce this today by, by going through just a, uh, some, some scriptures, some things that God encourages us to guard against. And before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you and, and we realize that this world that we live in has struggles, that there's temptations, that there are difficulties that we deal with, things that get in our way, and a lot of times we're distracted from putting our eyes on you. And so as we look at your word today. I pray that you would help us, help us to learn to guard, to do what we can to remind ourselves to guard against the things that war against us. We love you and we thank you for your grace and your mercy as we proceed in our walk of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, to start with, in 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter is a, a book that suffering is a large theme. You can't go 10 verses without having something about suffering pop up in, in 1 Peter. And it's whether it's trials of life or whether it's uh, people on the outside, your family members, um, the the government. Uh, you're, you're, we are beset. And it's not something that just Christians undergo. There's suffering in the world, even if you're not a Christian. And Peter, so Peter encourages us that if we are to suffer, then suffer as a Christian. And as he goes through all these different situations and the way that we're supposed to behave within this suffering, rejoicing and giving blessing and submitting to authorities and, and those sort of things, at the very at the end of the book in chapter five, he brings he brings into view really the cause. Of that suffering. In chapter 5, verse 8, he says, Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Watch out, be on your guard. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. He says that the adversary is not temptation. It's not your family members that's treating you poorly. It's not the government. It's not the, the people in the society that you live in. Those, they may seem like in our, in our physical world, it may seem like that's what our enemy is. But ultimately, our enemy, our adversary, is the devil, and he's doing everything he can to kill us. He wants to devour us. And so Peter says, keep your eyes open. Be on your guard. Because there's an enemy who's looking for you. So in these situations that you come in, whenever you are tempted or whenever you are oppressed or whenever you are going through trials or struggles, behind all of that is this one that, that wants to pull you away from, 
from your people, to pull you away from the shelter of your Savior, your shepherd, so that he can get you. So the first thing I want us to start with in this whole discussion of, of what we are to guard is to realize what we are guarding against. In all the situations, there is something we're guarding against, and it is our enemy who wants to kill us. And so this is serious business. Whenever we talk about how we are to guard We're talking about life and death here. The next verse I want to look at is just uh, a couple of pages over in 1 John chapter 5. It's the very last verse. Now, 1 John starts off talking about talking about the fellowship that Jesus and God and the apostles have with us and that we're all in this together. And so there is one God and one Jesus that, that, that has saved us and that his blood is the propitiations for our sins and we, and we have forgiveness in those things whenever we confess and we're in this fellowship of believers. And the very last thing he says in, ch in chapter 5, verse 21, Little children, guard yourselves from idols. Guard yourself from putting things in front of God. Worshiping something other than Him. This God who we have fellowship with, this God who we... Uh, who we rely on for our salvation, who has provided the way for us to be forgiven of our sins, this God deserves preeminence in our life. And when we allow something, and it really doesn't matter what it is, Idols can be anything from a graven image that you that you bow down towards thinking that there's a power behind that or it could be money or it could be your job it could even be your family all these things of life and some of them can be good things in and of themselves they could be blessings that God has blessed you with but if they become the, the thing that's in the preeminent place in your, in your life, then that becomes an idol. And John says, guard yourself from idols. Guard yourself from placing anything in front of God. So, Behind all the, the stuff that's going on in our life that is distracting us and trying to pull us away, there is an enemy that wants to kill you. And one of the ways that he does that is he tries to give power to things that there is no power in. And when we start believing that lie, you know, that money's going to save us. Or, or our culture is going to save us, or our, or our president, our, our uh, government is going to save us, or that we need something more than God. When we start believing that and placing that first, it distracts us. Now, those are two big ideas that we're going to deal with. We have an enemy and that there is this distraction that when we put anything in front of God, those are, those are these big ideals that we are to, to remember and to guard. What we're going to go into next real quick are four things, four things about us that we are to guard. This isn't this isn't things on the outside pressing in. This is who we are. 
And I want to start all the way back in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Moses telling the people of Israel before they're going into the land of Canaan. Now, this is a people that are coming out of 40 years of wandering because they tested God and they, they pushed God and they complained towards God and, and they did, they, they murmured and rebelled against God. And so God allowed everyone over the age of 20 to die in the wilderness. And now this new generation has risen up. And before they go into the land of Canaan, Moses tells them some things that are very important. This one here, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 7 through 9. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call on Him? Or what great nation is there that has the statutes and judgments that are as righteous as the whole law which I'm setting before you today? Only give heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently so that you don't forget the things which your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life, but make known to your sons and to your grandsons. He says, who else has a God like our God? Who else has a way of life that is as good as the way of life that God is giving to us? So what we need to look out for is our soul. And brothers and sisters, there's nobody out there that is going to guard your soul. Uh, they, they can't. It's yours. It's your possession. It's yours to guard. Now, we may encourage. We may try to strengthen. We may try to, to, to support. But guarding your soul is, is your choice. Now, you put it into the care of the Lord and He'll shepherd it and He'll take care of it. But we have to make that, but we have to make that choice. So the first thing we are to guard is our soul. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, Solomon uh, speaks of the heart like this. Proverbs 4, 23. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. You know, our heart can, can betray us. It can lead us in ways that, that aren't good for us. And so Solomon, in this discourse says that whenever you put your heart in the right place, life comes from it. Life can come from, from your heart when you guard it. When you, when you take care of your heart, when you watch over it. It's almost like a farmer watching over his, his garden, watching over his crops. And whenever you see things that aren't supposed to be growing, growing, well, you take them out. You get rid of them. Or whenever you see enemies coming in and trying to fight, you know, trying to, uh, you know, make sure you put up that scarecrow to, make, to, get, the, to get the crows out of the corn. Solomon says that from your heart can flow life. And in verse 22, it says that that, that life can even be health to the body when your heart is in the right place. So guard your heart. Guard your soul. Guard your heart. And then in Psalm 39, Psalm 39, David, well, let me get there. 
Psalm 39, David begins this psalm in verse 1 by saying, by, by giving this, this statement of what he's going to guard. He says, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth as with a muzzle while the wicked are in my presence. When you have struggles and difficulties and things going on, whenever you are being attacked, and David went through those things. David, David didn't always have an easy life, you see. And his statement here is, when I have wicked people coming, when I have difficulties, whenever I have things that are trying to draw me aside and assault me, I'm going to guard my tongue. And I will guard my tongue, and by doing so, I will guard my way. The way that God has laid before me, that, that Moses talked about. Who else has given us a way of life that is as good as, as what God's way of life is? And so we guard that way. We can guard that way by guarding our tongue, by making sure that, that whenever difficulty comes, whenever struggles happen, whenever trials assail us, whenever there is an enemy who is waging war against us, we make sure that what comes out of our mouth, we make sure that our tongue is guarded. Speaking of our way, we've seen soul, we've seen heart, we've seen tongue, and the enemy is trying to assail us, and he's trying to, to distract us, and he's trying to, to get us to put things in front of God. But the Apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, it's the last, last chapter of 1 Corinthians, in verses 13 and 14, Here's what Paul says to, to these, these, really it's a, a fractured bunch of Christians. It's Christians who have, because of their greed, because of their, their wanting to be more prominent, their pride, have, have caused a fracture in the church. He says, be on the alert, stand firm in the faith, and act like men and be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. They've already been, been assailed. They've already allowed things on the inside to break them apart, to harm the church. And after addressing some of those things throughout the, birth of the book of 1 Corinthians and how they are to do, how they are to, to go forward, he says, be on the alert and stand firm in your faith and let everything you do be done in love. And so guarding the way is guarding our faith and guarding our love. Our faith, this connection that we have with God through Jesus, and let everything be done guarding our love, our behavior with one another. And so remember, there's an enemy and we can be distracted by things to replace our God with. Don't do that. And our soul, our heart, our tongue, and our faith and our love are things that we are to guard like treasures. 
Because when we give those things over, we can easily find ourselves separated from our God who loves us and who saves us and wander away, away from the herd so that that enemy, the roaring lion, may devour us. And I strongly believe that if we commit ourselves to guarding these and other aspects, that God will support us in that and that he'll give us strength. You may think you don't have the strength or the focus or whatever, but when you commit yourself to those things that God will make sure, God's promised that he'll give you everything that you need and that he won't let you go. So let us go forward, seeing to guarding who we are as God's people. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to continuing this with you next week.